and I've thought to myself, there must be, you know, I wonder what could help me tap into what feels best at that point in time. Yeah, what I did in my life was, many years ago, I, I, I sensed that too. I sensed that I, I needed, I wanted a better discernment between the ego and the Holy Spirit. And I thought to myself, and I guess the Holy Spirit is, you give, can you give me something practical that can help me? Even if it's going to take me time, I'm willing to work on it. Uh, if you can give me something practical. And the Holy Spirit said, well, just look at your life as it seems to be, you know, your life in the world. And just begin to start to consider how many of your actions every day as you go through your daily life are based on fear of consequences. And I said, I said, what do you mean? Fear of consequences. So the Holy Spirit said, well, let's take for instance your job. Um, would you go to that job every day unless you had fear of consequences? And I said, no, of course, of course not. I wouldn't be going to work every day <laughs> if I had no fear of consequences. And the Holy said, okay, that's one aspect of your life that we can identify as based on fear of consequences. And then, you know, you could go through all of the daily little nuances that seems to be part of the day, including, uh, we would say very subtle aspects of people pleasing, not wanting to let people down, not wanting to hurt people's feelings, not wanting to step on anyone's toes. Recently I was in London and um, I was over there and, and I, I kind of moved through London and everything and I noticed this word kept coming up all the time, sorry. You know, I'd be going, sorry, 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 so you could touch an elbow on the, on the tube, sorry. You know, it was like, sorry, sorry, it was like a giant apology. <laughs> Uh, going on everywhere. <laughs> I wonder if people are kind of stiff over here. <laughs> I'm afraid they might touch or do something to somebody. And so I was like, but I thought, well, there it is. That was just an example of, of an overly, overly sensitive to not wanting to be in someone's face or do anything disturbing. And sometimes, you know, if somebody's even staring at you and you look at them and then they go, oh, sorry. It's like, it doesn't even involve touch. Like, sorry, I stared at you for 7.2 seconds and that's over the limit. That was very rude of me to stare at you for that long. You know, it's still this, it's based on fear of consequences. So then I started to do that with my life. I thought, well, that's a practical. I can do that. I'll sit down and I'll pay attention as I go through the day to what actions I'm doing based on fear of consequences. Because the implication is, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are saying, imagine if you were only motivated by love. Only by love. And nothing else. Imagine how your life would go. Imagine how different it would be if love was your only motivator and there was no sense of fear you know, pushing you and then that, that actually helps us to start to get into a good discernment uh, and start to, in, I'd say, investigate a little bit. Like I would do that, I was over at the University of Cincinnati and I, I was there, like I said, for 10 years for full time and I would go walk in the woods, you know, and I think especially by the time I got into graduate school, I took these long walks. Like, what am I doing this for? Is there a purpose? And this and the ego would say, yes, you need to have a degree because you need to have a good job because if you want to have a relationship, you can't be poor and broke. And you know, the ego would, of course it would rattle off, this is why you're here and this is why you've been here for 10 years and, and just keep at it and you know, we'll get through this phase. But it was like, and then I would have to start to open up more to Jesus and just ask, you know, why am I here? You know, am I afraid of something? Is there something driving me to, to get all this education? Is there something pushing me underneath? Am I afraid of something? Aside from, you know, like not having a, what the world would call a, a fully engaged life. Well, many people do that, that's not like, 
I need a graduate degree to have a full life. But, and then the more I took it inwards, the more it was, Jesus was able to say, yeah, you, you want freedom, peace, happiness, joy, love, intimacy, and you believe many things about what you have to do in this world to get those things. And that's driving you. And he was saying, if you listen to me, I will show you how to experience those things that you want through me. In other words, through following me. And it will come from the inside of you. It will not come from any event or outcome in the world. And so that's what honestly turned me in the right direction to start to actually start to look where my actions were motivated by fear of consequences. And I was astounded at the beginning. There was so many. It was a huge percentage. It was a bit, you know, you could be tempted to judge yourself and go, my God, what am I doing here? You know, really. But it's like, no, no, don't do that. Just be happy to start to discover how you're plugged into fear of consequences and then unplug, you know, with the Spirit's help. And that's the way that it goes. So to me, I, I found that very practical. Is something I could really, you know, contemplate and ponder. I knew it would be a big job. I wasn't thinking it was like, you know, going and taking a pill and then wake up the next day, I'm free of fear. <laughs> you know, it was, it, I knew that it would take contemplation, mind training, practice. But with the Course in Miracles, you, it's a great tool. It's really, it's like a sharp blade that just burrows down into your mind.